Hey guys, we got Mark Narmore in the house. Mark and I wrote what I think is a very special song called Head From My Heart. And we're here at the world famous Muscle Shoals Sound Studio. And uh, Mark set up the session here because he's a Muscle Shoals guy to the bone, born and raised here. Um, he's had hits with Shenandoah, Craig Morgan, many others if you look it up and hopefully some of his mojo will rub off on me with this song stuff you know <laughs> but but i'm so glad that you're here today and that you helped facilitate this and um i wanted to ask you what does uh this studio mean to you do you have any special memories that you've made in this room you know this studio along with just the, all the muscle show studios troy were special to me because at age 13, I sort of found out, or maybe a little younger, that people like Cher and Bob Seger, and you mentioned Joe Cocker, they're in, our, in my own hometown. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to be enamored with it. But also, Troy, we're, we're the same age, and, and Jeff McMahon also. But all the people I was playing music with, we, were, we just wanted to be a part of Muscle Shells. We wanted to find a way to be a part of it. So... I actually didn't play in the studio because I was probably too young when it was... Yeah, when it was its heyday. When it was, yeah, it was heyday and when it had started and flourishing. Um, but yeah, we, we all knew, all my You're friends, all we were following it so, so much and a near worship of the industry. And also Spooner Oldham is my first cousin, so he played on the Aretha session at Fame, Wilson Pickett, Mustang Sally. So he was definitely a mentor for me and I idolized Spooner. So um, I really, I knew I wanted to follow music, whatever it was, but Muscle Shoals was the the reason we, and like yeah, I say. You didn't even have to leave to go to a music city. You were here. Didn't even have to leave. It was the most cool and bizarre thing, but such a blessing and a cool thing to have it sort of dropped in your lap and in, in the town where you live you know yeah uh so so did the music that you well you're like me we're the same age so we grew up on all that rock which they yeah. call classic rock yeah now. i love but, it but but uh like when did you feel like i want to write a song i want to write songs what inspired you was it the music here or just in general you know, it's kind of like I originally, Troy, wanted to be a, a keyboard guy like Spooner and like Barry Beckett who played this, these pianos in here that Jeff so masterfully played. Yeah, Jeff McMahon incredible. is one heck of a keyboard guy, and you're going to talk to him in a bit. But um, tell me the question again. I, I'll chase well, a rabbit. Well, was what, what inspired you to start writing songs? Oh, yeah. You know... In 1984, after college, uh, or during college, I got a little radio gig in Lexington, Alabama, which is about 40 minutes from here. And I, I really didn't know country music. My dad played Carter Family Records on the Victrola. I mean, no, the record player. <laughs> we didn't have a Victrola. <laughs> but, yeah. but so I really did. I grew up like you, loving ACDC to James Taylor to Boston to Kiss yeah that was what I, I wanted to be the air guitar rock star so playing country music was a transition it almost like uh man it was like a you know it's Isn't, a dead it, stop it's funny how you realize that a bit later in life i guess it's like taste changing that uh this is something that i i tell my, all my hardcore rock and roll friends that think that maybe I'm selling out to be country. Uh -huh. I'm like, you don't know how much country influenced all that rock and roll. Country and I'll show them riffs all. on guitar that are rock riffs, but, oh, that is a country lick. Yeah. You know? And the cool thing is music and all these riffs are pretty universal. It could go in any genre. But the radio, I, Troy, I was having to spin songs like George Jones, who I really didn't know anything about. I didn't know Merle Haggard heard of them but it's sort of like a religious experience when i heard the double play and the word twist oh my goodness katie bar the door i was sold and knew i wanted to be a songwriter i wanted to make mm. those triple plays of words like golden band on the right left hand and that cadence yeah the, the, the cadence and the just the, the lyrical twist was so clever and what i thought was not super ingenious 
I was won over and I thought these Nashville songwriters are lyrically geniuses and I want to just try to do that. So it's funny, at that time I could do songwriting here because fame had Walt Aldridge and Tommy Brassfield who had started going to Nashville. Oh, and to interject, yeah, you yeah. wrote for Rick Hall yeah. at Fame. At, at as Fame. A, at fame. As a I, staff writer. I was a staff writer with Rick at Fame for 11 years, but he had, Rick had Walt Aldridge and Tommy Brasfield, who had Song of the Year on Ronnie Millsap, No Getting Over Me, mm. um, Holding Her in Love, and You Earl Thomas Connolly. So that fueled us young guys again, like, hey, we can be songwriters now. But we did it through Nashville. At that point, <clears throat> the songwriting uh, was country music. Shenandoah happened to be right there in-house, Troy. So I knew the guys. They knew me. We kind of all knew what they were looking for. So Moon Over Georgia, I do think, looking back, I was bound to have been uh, targeting that toward them or leaning toward them. Yeah. That was how the machine was writing for Nashville, kind of, so to speak. Right, right, uh-huh. Um, okay, the last question I would say is what what do you, uh, what gets you out of bed for music in the morning? What do you get excited about for music now? Like, I know, you know, when you do it for years, yeah. and you've had some highs and you had yeah. some lows, what is the honest thing that makes you want to keep making more? You know, and you would think, I mean, I love songwriting so dearly, but I think it's the music, just the music in general, getting up and be able, being able to play a piano or play an organ at home, knowing that that music I play could wind up in a song. It could wind up me, me practicing for a gig I'm playing or just like talking to God and letting that be between me and, and him, you yeah. know, it's just... The music is still the basis for me. Playing those licks, Ray Charles licks, I could play around all day long. You know, my wife knows I'm, I'm a jammer. I like belonging in that jam band with you on the carport. Oh yeah, playing Kiss, yeah, rock and roll all night. But yeah. jamming even by myself is what gets me out of bed. Yeah, so truly, it's what uh, what inspires you. Is kind of like me. People ask me that question all the time. What makes you want to make music? I guess because it makes me feel good. Yeah, and it and it and it doesn't. It can even be a sad thing, but it's right. making me feel but, good. But too, you'll have to say, and we we talked a lot about rock. The air guitar stuff we come through in the seventies. We all wanted to be rock stars like Tom, oh, yeah. like uh, Vince Neil and crew. And so Van so, Halen. and I always had the low lumbering voice, you know. But I wanted to be a no <laughs> paradise city. Yeah. You you have a natural great tenor, so you you kind of fit the bill for that, right? Oh, thanks. Yeah. So it's, it is. It's you know we are who we are. Right? And I just like, blew the sound guys out when I did Axel yeah. Rose there. So they're going like, yeah, man. All right, thanks so much, Mark, for writing this Appreciate song with you, me, Troy. and I think we got a really good one here, and you yeah. facilitating. This all happening here today at Muscle Shoals Sound, so thank you. Amen. Thank you, Troy. All right.